everybody and welcome back to the TARDIS. Uh, we have so many things to chat about today, so I'm going to start off with the big news. I actually had an opportunity uh, to meet up with Mike Machat of the Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat channel. He was in Orlando when I was in Orlando and we managed to get together for a while. And we had a, a wonderful discussion and everything, spent some time together. His friend Glenn was with him and uh, just uh, three guys talking about models. And Mike brought something that uh, was just in in incredible. You guys know, uh, of course, I'm, I'm big into the box art and everything. My favorite artist is the great uh, uh, Jack Linwood. Uh, he did my favorite, several of my favorite box arts, including uh, this one, which is the uh, 132nd scale uh, Ravel Spitfire Mark I. This is absolutely my favorite box art, bar none. And I've always wanted to get a, a piece of Jack's original artwork if I could, but it just seemed like that was never going to happen. Well, it just so happens that Mike had come into a couple of Jack's uh, comps or composites. Now, these are uh, paintings that show what the box art is going to look like, but they're not the actual box art. They're, done, they're, they're smaller and uh, maybe not quite as detailed, but these are what the uh, companies will approve before they actually commit to having the big full-size uh, painting done that becomes the actual box top. And lo and behold, uh, he, he showed them to me and I was flabbergasted when he offered to let me choose one to keep. Uh, he also had uh, some artwork uh, by uh, Kashady, and I, but there was no doubt in my mind it was it was I was going to take one of the the Linwood box arts because I've always wanted some of his art, and so now I am the proud possessor of Jack Linwood's original SE5A comp, which was uh, what was used to approve the later full size artwork for this box art for Ravel's SE5A. Uh, according to Scalemates, this was the 1963 Ravel Great Britain kit, which in 1964 became the Ravel kit that was sold in the USA. So apparently uh, the kit was sold in Britain first for a year before they manufactured them in the USA. They used the same box art. But now I have this lovely, absolutely fantastic, and going on, what are we looking at now, almost 60-year-old comp. Now this is painted in gouache, which are watercolors, which means they, and this is not, has no coating or finish over it, so it can't be exposed to sunlight, you can't get it wet. My wife and I are looking for a shadow box to put it in where I can display it without making the slightest alteration to it. Uh, it's signed on the back by Howard Goldstein, who was the art director at Ravel at the time, and he, he gave Jack the, uh, the, the idea, of, told him what he wanted, and of course it's signed on back, which means that it was approved. It is just incredible. I, I, I'm still kind of giddy. I can't believe I actually finally have an original piece of Jack Linwood art uh, that is courtesy of Mike Machat. Mike, I cannot thank you enough. Guys, if you have not checked out Mike's channel, Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat, if you like this channel, you'll like that channel. Please, by all means, go there. And again, my thanks to Mike. I just, I just can't thank you enough. And uh, I would have made him an offer on the rest of the artwork, but these aren't the kind of things that you sell. You can't put a price on something like this. When I showed it to my wife, who herself is an artist, she I explained to her, and she's heard me talk about Jack Linwood before. She instantly understood and appreciated the significance of it, and she also very much admired his incredible artwork. And she was the one that said, we have to get a frame for it. And I'm like, I'm not letting a, a framer touch this. No one touches this. And she goes, I'll tell you what, we'll get... We'll get a shadow box or something that we can put it in where we'll have to get the measurements, but it's going to be displayed safely. Right now, it's in my photo booth uh, with the lights turned off where it's completely safe. And I'm just, uh, the, these photographs are actually scans that I took with an app on the phone. And I used uh, several different features so I could sort of play with the image here and kind of maybe roughly give you an idea how the how this would go together of course this is just something using a telephone app but uh, i just that's going to have a very at first i was just going to put it in behind some of the models maybe put it in a world war one shelf and go find uh, a 170 second scale ravel se5 i will probably have to go find a ravel se5 that has that box art to put with it but i i just this is this is going in a place of honor 
somewhere. We'll figure out where if I have to redecorate the whole house because <laughs> that's how I roll. So again, Mike, thanks for that. And thanks for that. Now, uh, in other stuff, well, uh, I have a small box is waiting on me when I got back. This is from David D. up in uh, Minnesota. David, thank you. As usual, I've already cut the tape, but I have not opened the box. So let's see what is in here. It does always make sure I get everything out of the box. It's not uncommon that I uh, accidentally toss something because I didn't check the box. This is a wagon train. Okay, by Airfix. Their little wagon train set that, uh, what is the scale on it? 46 pieces, HO scale and OO scale. All right, and we have what looks like a cannon with some infantry that somebody had built. And might be the turret off the tank, not sure, but you can never have too many infantrymen. Ask any general. Oh, there they are in the bag. Oops, I don't think you can see them. I'll, I'll see if I can't spread these out and take a picture of them for you. All right. Okay, something's rattling around in here. Oh, just a piece of cardboard. Well, David, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm going to put that right here and get some pictures of that in a minute. For those who saw the road build, the lag did make it home in one piece. The only thing that got broken off was uh, the antenna, which is not a big deal because, as I understand it, the uh, Russian radios weren't that great to begin with. Now, this will go on the shelf, and when I get a chance, I will take some of the parts off. I did remove the propeller for shipment. I just slid it back in. But I will uh, be taking this at some point and repainting and probably putting in the check markings. And uh, But I have to remove the canopy so I can paint the interior. But... Uh, that's the kit by KP, and uh, not a bad little kit at all. Absolutely, really nothing wrong with it, given the vintage and everything. Very pleased with it. Haven't touched Felix Stowe, like I say, just got home. Hope to do some work on the Felix Stowe. Get started, I believe, on the main wings uh, this uh, set of days off. I only have three days off. Oh, gosh, here I am. You know what? Getting things out of order here. Here's a note. Uh, I just saw the note that <laughs> I set it aside. Apologies, David. Uh, Max, something different with all of your diorama building, I was thinking you might have some use for these. Enjoy the info you put out. Uh, been a model nut for over, for uh, ever. Uh, the kid in me is still raging. Take care, Dave. <laughs> yeah, well, kid in me is uh, the same way. And, uh, you know, well, like I just said before I even read this, you're absolutely right. You can never have too much infantry. The figures are always a great thing to have, and I appreciate that. And that might inspire me to do another diorama. And uh, I've got plenty of nutty ideas of stuff to do. So, uh, okay, F uh, Felix, though, I just said, I'll, I'll try to get started on that. Uh, a couple of sort of quasi housekeeping chores or, or things. First off, uh, somebody sent me, I don't know if it was in the, in, the, in, in the reply comments or through Facebook or an email, they had asked about a kit they were looking for. I think it was one of the Tom Daniel kits and I, I can't find the message uh, I, 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 I so whoever it was that was it was it the thunder or something uh, it was it was anyway just put the comment stream down here and folks can read it and and, 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 and I'll find it in this comment stream and, and then maybe ask again but it was somebody that was looking for a particular kit that he, they couldn't find for a love or money and uh, I think it was one of the Tom Daniel designs and I apologize when I read that I told you I would ask and when I went back to look for it, I couldn't find, I don't know if it was an email or, or Facebook. I, there's so many forms of communication coming in that some of the stuff tends to get lost. I have started downloading your photos as soon as I get them onto my phone. I made a uh, Max's Models uh, album on my phone so that because it's always possible that when I'm out on the road, you email something, I look at it, oh, that's great. Then when I get home, I don't go far enough down the email chain and, and I don't find it. So. Just uh, ask what that was again down below, and, and next time uh, I'll, if I find it, as soon as I can, I'll get out there and ask you. So I apologize. I, I promised you I'd ask, and, and here I am not able to find the message again. I also uh, have gotten a couple of comments about the volume. Now, when I edit these things, I 
have my headsets on and, and, and on my editor, the sound comes out balanced. Unfortunately, some people listen on cell phones. Some I don't know if it's exactly what the causal factor is, but some folks are saying they're having to adjust their volume. So I'll try and keep the the music down a little bit and try to do a better job of balancing it out. It sounds good to my ear, but I'm my own audio man. And while I'm on that, uh, I'd ask you guys if you like the longer intros or the shorter ones. And you may have already noticed I used the real short one on this. Uh, it got a, a mixed response. Uh, so what? I figure I'm going to start doing just in the interim unless people don't like it is I'm going to use the short intro at the beginning but I'm going to put a long intro or excuse me a long outro on the backside so that way just a few seconds and you're into the video and when it's over if you don't want to see my long outro just you know that's it it's over and if you want to see uh, the music and everything and, and some snapshots and stuff what I had been doing is using some of the pictures sort of as quick teasers of what was occasionally coming in in the video, but you're watching the video anyway, so that's it was just a, a thing. But it seems like uh, there's there's no real uh, critical mass one way or the other. So I figured I'll keep the intro short and then play with the outros. And, and from an editing standpoint, that actually makes things a lot easier on my end because anytime you start adding stuff at the beginning, it has an effect on the rest of the video. If you tack it on the end, it's a lot simpler. Uh, there's video 101 for you. So that's what we uh, have uh, for today. That, that pretty much brings you up to speed. I don't know how much I'll get a chance to get done these days off because with the few days off I've got, of course, I have to do all the other real world things. But I do want to get out here and get some work done. Uh, probably will be pushing my luck to get one video a day out. But We'll see. We just go with the flow. And uh, remember, the whole idea is for this to be fun. One, one thing that was also just uh, a, a, from a couple of sources that come out, I, am, I don't monetize these videos. I, I don't want to because I lose my artistic freedom. And you start dealing with the YouTube gods. Uh, and that gets a little dicey. So for right now, there's no merch. There's no... Uh, it's just... I'm just doing this for the fun of it. Maybe, maybe someday when I retire, I'll make a living at this or something. I don't know. But I looked at the YouTube algorithms. I don't know if it'd be enough money to be worthwhile anyway. But so many things are going on right now that I have to sort of uh, take a little stock here. And, and I want to focus on the Felix though, which believe me, one thing I'm learning is if you get, an, if you get a kit like that, set short-term goals and keep working on those because it's uh i mean one engine on that airplane is a goal in and of itself and uh the the rigging and everything just just it's real easy to find yourself getting wrapped around the axle because you get overwhelmed by what's going on however as i had pointed out earlier the more of this rigging and stuff i do you start developing your own technique and after what it's like anything else the more you do it the better you get at it so that's one reason I want to get working on the main wings before I kind of lose my mojo. And once it gets all rigged up, uh, my wife and I have uh, probably picked out a place we're going to put it. So it'll mean rearranging an entire room, but a good model's worth that, right? That's pretty much all I have. And in my tradition of always saying that before I uh, make one more thought, just some useless aviation trivia for you. I was watching... Uh, Kermit Weeks, uh, the Kermit cams and things he does, and he was, I found one was a few years old, he, he has this Fokker D7 up in Ernst Dudet's markings, and uh, it was uh, it was a few years old when the airplane was still under construction or rebuilt, and you've probably noticed that uh, these Fokers, they have the scallops, virtually every Fokker has scallops on the uh, trailing edge of the wing, and the Germans on the trailing edge of the wing would use like a heavy gauge piano wire that just ran through the formers. And as a result, when they put the fabric on it and tightened it, the wire would bend a little bit in each, between all of the uh, wing ribs, and that would, of course, give it that scalloped look as it would pull in a little bit. And that's why all those Fokers have that uh, scallop trailing edges on their wings. I just thought that was kind of cool. I also didn't realize that the Germans used a steel tube fuselage, which meant uh, they didn't need the highly skilled labor that it took to do to work with the wood and they could crank them out faster. So interesting. Well, interesting to me. <laughs>
Well, guys, I hope you're having a great day. Glad to be back. It feels good to be in front of the camera chatting with you. Um, Got to go back in and get this video processed, and then uh, I probably won't be out here doing any work on models. I need to, some family time and everything. So, guys, you take care of yourselves. Hope you're all doing well, and model on.